know. We're going to talk about the properties of parallelograms today. Um, let me get this zoomed in. You can actually draw yourself a parallelogram, take out a compass and a protractor and a ruler and measure and discover all this stuff yourself. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to tell you. So in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. Opposite means the ones across from each other like that. And these are also congruent to each other. They're also parallel, but that's the definition of a parallelogram. And we're talking about the properties of a parallelogram. Opposite angles, so this angle and that angle, this angle and that angle are also congruent. So opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive, which means in a row, angles are supplementary. And hopefully, as soon as you hear the word supplementary, a little light turns on in your brain and says that they add up to 180. So any two consecutive angles, these two, these two, these two, and those two all will add up to 180 each pair. And lastly, we have diagonals. Diagonals go from one vertex to another. These are diagonals. And in a parallelogram, diagonals bisect each other. So those are the basic properties of a parallelogram, and I'm going to show you how it works over here in this example. All right, so A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. If they don't tell you that, you can't keep going. We're going to find the missing measurements. A, B, which is over here, would be congruent to the one opposite it, because in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. AC, the diagonal, is kind of weird because they only give us part of it right here. This is 11. But over on the other side, we talked about how in a parallelogram, diagonals bisect each other. And hopefully you remember that bisect means cut in half. So if this is 11, this has to be 11. So the whole thing would be 22. 11 plus 11. And B, E, from here to the center, would have to be the same as this for the same reason. In a parallelogram, diagonals bisect each other. So that's 7. All right, that's all the sides. Now let's look at the angles. Well, it's not all the sides, but it's all the sides they're asking for. All right, so if we're looking at angles, angle B, A, D is this whole thing here. All right. But we only have a piece of it right there. So you need to look around the shape and see if there's anything else you can find. Over here, we have 49. And if you look at this, wouldn't those be alternate interior angles? So that's also 49. So the whole angle BAD would be 49 plus 27 which equals 76 degrees. So I'm just going to write it out here just because I don't have room inside. That whole angle is 76 degrees. Angle ADC, ADC is this whole spot right here. One of the rules of parallelograms or properties is that consecutive angles are supplementary. I'm kind of outlining those two, the yellow one over on this side and this one here. These have to be supplementary. If this one is 76, then this one would have to be 180 minus 76, which is 104 degrees. That's the whole pink angle. The next one wants the measure of angle A, B, D. So just this part right here. Because we just talked about how in a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent, those two angles are the same. So this whole thing is 104. In order to find this side, we would just subtract 104 minus 43. So 61 degrees. And that seems crazy and confusing, and everybody feels the same way. So we're going to show you how it works 
kind of big picture confusing style now, and then we will um, make it make a little more sense in a minute. All right, so our next little guy here is a rectangle. Rectangles, because they are a parallelogram, contain all the same properties as a parallelogram, but this time the diagonals are congruent. What that means is that all, and hold on, let me go back. In all parallelograms, diagonals bisect each other. So all these pieces are the same as each other. All right, and look how cool this is. Here's an isosceles triangle. And there's other ones. Do you see them? Hopefully you see them all. And you also have right, you don't have to color this on yours. You also have right triangles too. So you'll be able to use the Pythagorean theorem, the isosceles triangle rules, vertical angles, linear pairs, all sorts of stuff is inside of this guy. All right, so let's look over here. JKLM is a rectangle. Find each measure. All right, so KL is this side. So the one across from it, opposite, is 25. So KL has to be 25. NL, because in a rectangle, diagonals bisect each other, that has to be 13 for that piece. This whole diagonal here would be 26. And now it's asking for KM, this whole one. In a rectangle, diagonals are congruent, so that has to be 26 also. All right, I hope you're catching on a little. Angles. Angle KLM is this angle right here. What do you know about the angles in a rectangle? Well, what makes it a rectangle is that they're 90 degrees. They have right angles in all the corners, so that has to be 90. LMK is right here. And that would be alternate interior angles with 68. So that's 68. And lastly, angle LJM. LJM is right here. All right, so watch this magic unfold. There's a couple ways to do it. For me, I would look at this right angle because in a rectangle, the angles are all right angles on the corners. And I would just do oops, 90 minus 68. That gives me 22 degrees for this angle right here. Because in a rectangle, diagonals are congruent and they bisect each other, we end up with an isosceles triangle here. And I'm going to color that in just so you can see. See that guy? And in an isosceles triangle, base angles are congruent. So that other angle has to be 22 degrees. All right. We can fill in more in this picture. We could figure out this angle and then all of the other angles. But for sake of time, we're not going to do that now. Do you want me to show you later? I will. All right. A rhombus. Again, a rhombus is always a parallelogram. So it has the same properties as a parallelogram. And a couple other things. The diagonals bisect opposite angles. So what that means is that this angle is congruent to that angle, which means that these have to be congruent to those also. And that angle is congruent to that angle and that way as well. Right? They bisect the opposite angles. The other thing that's super cool is that di the diagonals in a rhombus are perpendicular. That is cool because check this out. Right triangles all over the place. So you'll be able to use trig and you'll be able to use the Pythagorean theorem and everything will be happy and great. All right, so let's see how it'll work over here on this example. If this shape is a rhombus, find the measures. XY is the top. 
rhombus, what makes a rhombus a rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides.